The following program was paid for by the friends and partners of Neil Thomas Ministries. Let's go and turn some more scripture for ourselves. Let's go to John's Gospel, chapter 3. If you have your Bibles, you might like to open them and read a few verses. Verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto Nicodemus, Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he go back and enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't be surprised that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth, and you can hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it comes, where it goes. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And Jesus answering him and said unto him, You're a master teacher of Israel, and you don't know these things? Truly, truly, I say unto you, We speak what we know and testify what we've seen, but you receive not our witness. If I told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man that hath ascended to heaven, but he that cometh down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is from heaven. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. For he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Praise God for the scriptures. Here we have a picture of a very religious man, a priest. He's a master teacher of the Bible, of the scriptures. He's a ruler in the church throughout Israel, a very senior priest. And he's amazed as he watches Jesus and he sees Jesus changing people's lives. He sees Jesus healing people. He sees Jesus doing miracles. And he chats in the conference room, in the boardroom, with some of the other leaders of the Jewish nation and the religious priests that he works with. And so he decides one night that he must go and talk to Jesus, but it's a very risky thing for him to do to be found talking to Jesus because he's a priest of the Jewish faith. But he decides he'll take the risks. So he came by night in the dark, knocks on the door. Jesus answers the door and he says, Master, I want to talk to you. We know, not I know, but we know, we religious leaders know that you're the man that God has sent to the earth. We know that you're the one with the answers. So Jesus said, all right, come in. 
And he said, Nicodemus, there's something that you don't seem to grasp. And you're a religious leader. You're a priest. You minister to people from the pulpit in the synagogue. You do Bible teachings. But you seem to be missing out. I've heard about you and there's something lacking in your head and in your heart. There's some truth that you haven't grasped. And there could be people here tonight or people watching and listening that have never understood this truth. If you want to go to heaven, you have to be born again. Nicodemus, he said, don't you understand, priest? Why are you leaving your people in the dark? Why are you not telling them the truth? For a man or a person to get into heaven, they have to be born again. Now in some Bibles, the Catholics call it born anew. In the Jerusalem Bible, it calls it born anew. In the Greek Orthodox Church, they say born from above. It means exactly born again. It's the same thing. In the King James, it calls it born again. In the Jerusalem Bible, it says born anew. And in the Greek writings, they say born from above. But it's the same thing. You can't get into heaven unless you have a new birth in your soul. Now, Nicodemus, he's trying to work this out. His professors never told him this. Although it's written in the books of Isaiah and in other prophets, they seem to not understand it, so they just left it alone. But Jesus is now talking to this great teacher. And so Nicodemus says to him, Master, how can a man, when he's fully grown up, climb back inside his mother's belly get into the womb and get born again. And Jesus said, excuse me. If he was in Australia, he'd say, you're a dingo. What do you mean? Don't you understand, Nicodemus? It isn't a physical birth. It's a spiritual birth. Nicodemus still doesn't understand. Jesus said, except you're born of the Spirit and of water, you can never enter the kingdom of God. You can never enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is struggling to understand this. A lot of men and women today are still struggling to understand it. 2,000 years after this man knocked on the door where Jesus was and he told him this, millions of people are being told this, but they still don't understand it. And there's people sitting in here that don't understand it. They don't understand what it means to be born again. And Jesus said, you have to be born of the water. You've got to get baptised. You've got to get baptised. You've got to be born of the water. You've got to be born of the water. Your old sinful life has got to be drowned in the water. It's got to be washed away. And then you've got to be filled with the Spirit. And of course we see lots of evidences throughout the writings of St Paul and the other apostles where men and women, when they wanted to come into the kingdom of God, they were told, repent! <coughs> Tell God you're sorry for your sin and get baptised and receive the Spirit. And there's story after story after story after story where men and women wanted to enter the kingdom of God. And so they repented in their hearts of being a sinner. And they were baptised into the water when they came up, it says, hands were laid upon them and they received the Holy Spirit. And one of the great evidences was they prayed and sang in tongues. That's in the Bible. 
So tonight I want to remind you, if you're a Christian, that if you're going to continue in the kingdom of heaven, you've got to stay born again. This is not a once-time experience. This is a continual experience. We have to keep on being born anew. You know what? If you were born and your mother breastfed you and you lived for three months and then you didn't keep on feeding, you would die. If you don't keep on eating every day, you're going to die. You're not going to last. You can't just have one meal and then lay back and say, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to live and I'm never going to eat again. You've got to keep on, keeping on, keeping on, keeping your, your life alive, your physical life alive. And you've got to keep on, keeping on, believing in Jesus. And you've got to keep on, keeping on, experiencing the result of your baptism. Or you will die and you'll never know the power and the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus is telling Nicodemus here. So he tries to explain to Nicodemus, don't you understand Nicodemus? You're a priest and you're clueless. Don't you understand that God loves men and women and he wants to save them? For God sent his son to die so that men and women could be born again, born anew, born from above and experience a whole brand new kingdom life. And the question tonight, I guess, for you and me is, are we living that kingdom life? You see, Nicodemus, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you're born in the water and in the spirit. You must be born again. You must be born anew. You've got to experience a birth from above and it's got to come into your soul, man. And then it's got to keep on keeping on. You know, I meet people as I travel. I've just been in Sydney this week. I meet people. They've had the born again experience, but you know what? They have got no God life left in them. They have no power of heaven in them. They're walking in the earthly down life. They're not experiencing the mighty kingdom life that Jesus came to give them. Why? Because every day they're not renewing in their thoughts and in their hearts the fact that they have had a born again experience. I said to one man, when were you born again? He told me, years and years ago he was born again. I said, were you baptised? He said, yes. Oh, it was a wonderful experience to come to know Jesus. I was from New Zealand and I was a wicked man. I was a sinful man. I didn't give a hoot nanny was his term he used. I was a wicked New Zealander. But the man that were in his house tonight met me on the roadway and introduced me to Jesus. And I got born again. I said, you know what that means? Yes, he said. I'm saved. I said, well, that's good, isn't it? But listen, friend, are you experiencing the powers of the kingdom of God in your life? Eh? Eh? What? What? So he was already telling me that he had lost the experience. A lot of you sitting here tonight and those watching and listening, you've had the born again experience, but now you've lost it. And at home you fight and argue. You are not born again if you do that. You've lost the born again experience. Some of you even swear at one another in the house. You are not born again. You're lost. You need to repent. You need to come back to your born again experience. Nicodemus, he knew all about that religious stuff, but he had no power. Good master, we know you were sent from God, but tell me, how do I live in the kingdom? 
Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born of the water and of the Spirit, and you must change and be different. How can you sit here today or sit watching and listening and tell us about some experience you had some months or years ago, but now you fight, you argue, you want to control people's souls. You're not ready to surrender to the kingdom life. My friend, you are lost. You are lost. You need to find your way back to the door and knock on the door and say, Master, reintroduce me to the kingdom. You need to open the door. Jesus said, I am the door. Knock on me and come in and talk with me. Jesus said in the last days, the Christian religious church will be filled with millions of people. Millions. And the church will be wealthy. And everybody around the church will be well off. And everybody will be living for himself. And he said, you will say, I'm born again. Look how God has blessed me. And this is the words of Jesus from Revelation chapter 3. And I'll say to you, you're naked, you're miserable, you're poor, you're living a wretched life, you're living a beneath life, and you've lost the kingdom. And then he said, I counsel you, to rethink about what I told you. About being born again. I counsel you to come to me, he said. Behold, I stand at the heart's door and I knock. And if any believer will open his heart and let me in, then I'll have kingdom supper with him. I'll have kingdom living with him. But he's got to let me in. You know, some of you have shut him out. Do you know that? Some of you sitting there watching at home, you've shut him out. Oh, you had a wonderful experience once with him, but you've shut him out now. Pressures of life, the cares of this world, the love of possessions. Remember the parable of the sower I'm talking about now? Shut the door on Jesus and his kingdom life. And now you act like a person that's never been born again. I want to tell you young people tonight at this youth service, you must be born again. And you don't want to look at mum and dad and see if they're born again, you've got to look at yourself. And if you see mum and dad arguing and fighting and rowing and, and being rude to one another, don't follow them, they're lost. They're not your example. Jesus is your example. Put your eyes on somebody that's living the kingdom life. And Jesus came, young people, to bring you that kingdom life. He came to lift you up out of the mess of ordinary human living and present you a way of life that's called kingdom living. Amen. Full of grace, full of forgiveness, full of love, and above everything, full of the power of God. Amen. Is that what you're seeing at home, young people? Is that the sort of house you live in? Mum and dad speak gently and nicely to each other. You don't hear them fighting. Or are you living in a house with religious parents who have lost the kingdom life? You see, Nicodemus had to learn something. When you get born again, you change. When you go into the waters of baptism, you bury the old culture. You bury the old life. You bury the old swearing. You bury the old anger. You bury all the old crap that came from your parents. You bury it and leave it behind. And you come up out of the water and you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And now you live a different life. You live the kingdom life. That's why Jesus died on a cross like this. That's the reason that he died on a cross like this. Was so you 
could be born again. You were born of your mother. But that's a very fallen and earthly life. But God sent his Holy Spirit into the world so you could experience what Jesus experienced, a born, a new life. Jesus said, I am come from above. I've been born from above. And I'm different. And all the time he talked about kingdom living, kingdom life. Kingdom behaviour. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. A man in the kingdom of heaven lives like this. A woman from the kingdom of heaven lives like this. He says it all through the books of the Gospels. And we've got churches full of men and women who are living in the beneath, fallen, rotten, filthy, dirty, human living. And they come to church and they praise God and they take Holy Communion. But in their living they mock the very man who died on the cross. Friends, tonight I call you back to the born again life. I call you back to the born and new life. I call you to the born from above life. It's the only life. It's a powerful life. It's a holy life. It's a good life. But you don't live it on Sunday in church services. You live it at home in the house. It's not a life that you worship. It's a life that you live. The born a new life, the born from above life, the born again life, young people, is not a religious thing that you tack on on Sunday and go out during the week and forget about it. It's a life that you live. It's a powerful life that you live. It's an everyday life. And particularly, it's in the home life. And if your parents are not living it, don't you follow them. Follow Mrs. Thomas and I, because we live it. We live it. You want to find somebody that lives it? Talk to us. Your mum and dad won't live it. Don't follow them. They're going to take you down to the pit with them. You start to live the life. If you're a teenager, you should say to mum and dad when they're fighting and arguing, excuse me. Where's the born again life in this house? I thought you were born from above, Mum. I thought, Dad, that you had had a born anew experience. I thought, Dad, that you got baptised and buried all that rubbish from your grandparents and ancestors. I thought now you're going to live the kingdom of Jesus' life in our house. What are you doing, Dad? You have a right, young people, to say that. If your dad strikes you, you let me know and I'll get the police right into him. You have a right to challenge your parents to live right. If you're born again, young man, young woman, you have a right to call your home to be a kingdom home. You have every right from Jesus. You have every authority from God to command your parents to live the kingdom life. Now, let me give you a warning, though. If you tell mum and dad to do it, they're going to watch you like a hawk from the sky. And the moment you do something wrong, they're going to say, hey, I taught you to live in the kingdom life, kid. See, what you meet out, you get back. This is good. This is good for us. This keeps me living right and it keeps my kids living right. And if we live right, we're living the kingdom life. And our neighbours will want what we've got. You know what the Bible says, young people rebuke one another in love that you might redeem your days that you might save the days that you're living in, that you might save the house you're living in. Kick the devils out of your house. You hear your parents rowing, go into your bedroom, shout out so loud six neighbours can hear you. Get out of here, devil! This is a born-again home. Put the windows up like Daniel. Put the windows up like Daniel and shout out, devils, get out of this window. This is a born-again house. Whoo! The whole street will shake. Why would I suggest you do this? Because I want to tell you, that's the life from heaven. That's the life that Jesus died and gave his life and blood and was tortured and punished so you, young people, can live this life. And they need to see it, not only in the church, but you need to see it in the house. 
If you have been blessed by this message, please visit our website, neilthomasministries.com and click on the donate button.